After a crushing victory over the voracious enemy on Plasma Mountain, the next stage of the campaign begins. Playing through Starship Troopers is one of those few times when I've been reviewing a game where simply bringing myself to play through it has been an absolute chore. Like finding the motivation to simply load it up and force myself through it was a sizable task in and of itself. Every single aspect of this game is just tedious, boring, frustrating, and unenjoyable. Every enemy is annoying and painful, and every weapon is weak and underpowered, and each level drags on and on. This is a long game, easily clocking upwards of 10 hours for a first time playthrough, and you will feel every single slow second of that 10 hours, as the game doesn't offer up anything you could even compare to fun throughout its entire dull campaign. Developed by Strange Light Software, known for the Android port of Crazy Taxi, it's easily one of the worst shooting games ever made. Left wall's taking a beating. Get over there and shore up their lines. So now you're probably thinking, well, it can't be that bad. Surely he's just been a grumpy prick and searching for things to complain about. Well, that's only half true. Luckily though, I've managed to play through this horrible piece of crap so no one else ever has to. And now I'll tell you why this game is as horrid as it is. Would you like to know more? Fuel transport coming in. So loosely based off the Starship Troopers film, what I think is one of the most overrated movies of all time, Starship Troopers The Game has you take on the role of a marauder in the never-ending battle against the insect-like alien race known as the Arachnids. To be honest, things actually start off well enough with some pretty cool and enjoyable missions fighting alongside platoons of mobile infantry as you battle waves and waves of bugs in giant expansive maps. Starship Troopers runs on the Swarm engine, an engine that's really true to its name, allowing for an enemy count so high that it becomes impossible to keep track of. And the first few missions in the game put this engine to extremely good use. From a technical perspective, it's kind of amazing seeing how many enemies can be on screen at once with absolutely zero slowdown. I mean, even the likes of Horde shooters like Serious Sam and Painkiller couldn't pull off this kind of thing, though they still did come pretty close. This allowance for a high enemy count seems to come at the expense of actual detail because outside of the sheer volume of enemies, it does on the flip side kinda look like garbage. Character, enemy and weapon models look like something from the late 90s and I'd compare certain in-game assets to the kind of thing you'd see in a really old engine. All that really differentiates it from those older engines is that the shaders make it look a little bit more advanced, even if those shaders just basically turn bump and specular mapping up so high that everything looks like it's covered in baby oil. What little music there is in this game tries to borrow from the motifs in the films, which it does do, though the issue here is that the sound mixing is just horrid. Certain lines of dialogue from NPCs are whisper quiet, and certain weapons don't project sound properly either. Similarly with music, despite having it at the same level as the other sound effects, I could often barely hear it. To contrast with this is the dialogue you receive from your superior officer over radio, and some of the weapon sound effects which are just uncomfortably loud. But it's the gameplay where the shit really hits the fan, and it won't take much time playing before you see how bad the whole thing is. And let me tell you, Sonny Jim, it sure is bad. Okay, we have the entrance secured. Now, let's get this compound cleared. Visually, I got a kind of Halo vibe from the gameplay here, mostly I think due to the health and regenerating shield mechanic, but also the weapon designs, which I think look very similar to Halo. However, this vibe is about all it's got going for it, because the gameplay is just sloppy in every conceivable way. For starters, the missions in this game have absolutely no kind of pace whatsoever. You just get kind of dropped into these huge environments, most of which honestly take upwards of an hour to finish, where you're then just either fighting droves of bugs alongside the mobile infantry or fighting droves of bugs by yourself. Sometimes you'll have to escort an NPC through an infested environment or spend 10 minutes in a last stand scenario, holding out against a never ending onslaught. But there's little difference between these mission styles because either way, you're still going to be doing 99% of the killing yourself. All up, I think there's about 7 or 8 weapons in the game, though half of these are derivatives of the MK2 assault rifle. Now the way this thing works is that the MK2 has been split up across 4 different weapon slots, with each weapon slot still containing the MK2, but equipping it with a different alternate fire mode. It could be the shotgun, the grenade launcher, sniper scope, or a simply faster firing rate, but the point is, it's still the MK2. They could have condensed all of these into one weapon slot and just let you change the alternate fire mode on the fly, but you know, that would have been a good idea. The other weapons are the shotgun, which is surprisingly effective when you're actually given ammo for the damn thing, a couple of rocket launchers and a railgun, all of which again you're given such limited ammo for that their usefulness is kind of negated. Then there's the fallback weapon which is the MK4 carbine, an assault rifle that for some reason has infinite ammo and a grenade launcher as an alternate fire. The only downside being that it overheats if fired for too long and it's practically useless against armoured enemies. 
Honestly though, this lineup would have been fine if the shooting didn't feel so boring and unresponsive. When you're shooting enemies, you get practically no recoil and no real sense of feedback if you're actually doing damage or not, especially against the tougher bugs. The MK2 has the most stock weapon sound effect I've ever heard and none of the alternate fire modes feel impactful, making it feel really underwhelming. Every now and then you'll hop on a turret and you'll be able to mow down some bugs with ease and they honestly needed more of these kind of moments because despite being in a stationary position, at least you felt like you were doing some damage and not just firing at the bugs with a goddamn pea shooter. The Arachnid roster is comprised of 90% warrior, but it also tries to add in a few different types to spice things up a little bit. So there's the Tanker and the Rhino, which are a lot tougher and have limited weak spots. There's a couple that launch projectiles, and there's a bug that hangs back, almost sniping at you from a distance. I'd say the most annoying are these small pricks that fire out some kind of plasma energy that melts your health and shield off in seconds. And the Armored Warrior types that can spit out some kind of acid. One thing that's the same across the board though with the Arachnids is that if you're fighting one, you're usually fighting dozens at the same time. And when you're playing certain missions, you'll notice how easy it is to get swarmed from practically every single direction within seconds. At this point, you'll find yourself moving backwards, firing frantically at everything you see, if not just staring at the game over screen for the 50th time. Honestly, there's moments in this game where they just throw so many enemies at you at once without reprieve that I wonder if the people who design these levels know anything whatsoever about video game design. I mean, get a fucking load of this, for instance. This kind of thing isn't skillful or challenging, it's just cheap and irritating, and you quite honestly cannot avoid taking damage during these kind of moments. More so because of the player's horrible movement speed and what has to be the saddest excuse for a jump I've ever seen in an FPS game. I mean, a morbidly obese person confined to a wheelchair can honestly jump higher. Boss fights are even more tedious, requiring more patience than they do skill, as you just repeat the same strategy for 5 or so minutes until the boss's idiotically huge health pool is finally drained. Again, the lack of any real feedback from shooting makes it hard to tell if you're actually hitting the boss's weak spot and doing any actual damage. Like I said, the game is a chore, and fighting the arachnids in this game is often a battle of attrition more than anything else. The novelty of taking on such an insurmountable force loses its appeal about 3 or 4 missions in, then you're just stuck fighting the same looking brain dead enemies for the remainder of the campaign, with very little differentiating each encounter. And when the shooting, the basic mechanic of the game is so flat and boring, you know you've screwed up. I reckon this game would have worked really well if it was a squad based shooter like Republic Commando or Brothers in Arms, where you could have commanded this squad of mobile infantry. You'd have an engineer, medic, heavy weapons guy, etc, and you all move through the missions completing mini objectives. It would have given the gameplay loads of depth and also made it more than just shooting brainless bugs over and over. And ultimately the issue is that Starship Troopers is a horde shooter, but it doesn't do horde shooting very well. Shooting the same enemy over and over is fine and dandy, it really is. I mean, I love games like Serious Sam and Painkiller. They pull this thing off very well, but if you're going to do that, you have to make sure it's actually fun. About the only thing I enjoyed in this game was when a mission ended, because when I was capturing footage for this review, I only ever played through a single mission a day because of how tedious the whole thing was. And that moment when I'd finished a mission was the longest time between when I knew I had to play the game again. I also do kind of like the physics. I mean, it is satisfying throwing a grenade into a cluster of bugs and watching their body parts fly all over the place. But I gotta say, that's about it. Starship Troopers is just a bad game. And even if you're a fan of the first and second film, there's just so little on offer here that it's actually astonishing. I mean, normally licensed games do kind of offer up some kind of enjoyment if you're a fan of the source material, but this game just doesn't offer up anything. I'd rather stick a fork in an electrical socket than play this again. I'd rather wear arseless chaps to a funeral or catch a brick wall with my face. When my emotions subside, I'm not going to say it's the worst game ever made, but it is so bad that when you're playing it, that's the thought that's constantly running through your mind, which I think speaks volumes. The people involved with making this game should feel bad, like there should be a sense of remorse every time they think back over it. It really is that crappy. I picked my copy up on eBay for around 20 bucks, which isn't going to break the bank, but for 20 bucks you can find far better games from the same time period that aren't going to leave you with such a horrible taste in your mouth. If you want a game that lets you kill lots of space bugs, go play Earth Defense Force. Sitting on a pineapple or spending hours with a cat of nine tails wielding dominatrix is less painful than the experience on offer with the Starship Troopers game. It even makes the second film look half decent, and that's saying something.
collateral damage.